What's up YouTube? In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create these text staggering animations on scroll in Webflow. You'll notice in the clonable in the description below, there's multiple different animations here we can choose from, and these animations are reusable, meaning we can easily apply them to multiple elements on the same page, and they'll trigger every time that element scrolls into view. So in the clonable, you'll notice each element we're animating has two data attributes. The first one has a name of text-split, and that's gonna split the text element into spans for each word and spans for each letter. So we can animate any of those pieces. The second attribute is the name I created for this animation. So this is my words slide up animation. I can apply this attribute to anything I want to have that animation. So for instance, I might drop some paragraph text in this section, and the first attribute I'm gonna give it is text split. So it'll split it into spans. And then the second attribute I'm gonna give it is the name of the animation I wanna use. I'm gonna use the words slide from right in this case. So I'll apply that there. And now you'll notice this paragraph text is being animated whenever it scrolls into view and it's using our words slide from right animation. And this animation is completely reusable. It's also being used on this headline here. So how are we doing this? Well, if you open up the page settings, we have some custom code in here. You can also move this code to the project settings if you'd like to apply these animations on every page of your site. So we're using a free split type library. We're also using GSAP to create the animation and scroll trigger to play them on scroll. So we're basically grabbing every element with a data attribute of text split and splitting it into words and character spans. And then from there, we create our scroll trigger and we're using that to play these different animations. So here we're grabbing every element that has the word slide up attribute and we're creating this animation for it. So if you don't need maybe the words rotate in or one of these, you can just delete it and clean up the code and only keep the ones you're actually gonna use in your project. For the rest of this tutorial though, I'll explain how to tweak and customize the code based on what you'd like it to do. So first we'll add a DOM content loaded event listener. This just makes sure the structure of our page is loaded before we try and run any JavaScript. Next we'll run our split type library. This is gonna grab everything with the data attribute of text split and break it into word and character spans. So now each element with the text split attribute on it should have a bunch of spans inside, some with the class of word and others inside of that with the class of char for character. Now let's create our word slide up animation. So we're gonna create a loop for that and we're gonna loop through everything that has the data attribute of words slide up. And we'll create a timeline for each of those elements. So we'll save it in a variable called TL, set it equal to gsap.timeline and we'll set it to pause true so it doesn't autoplay by default. Then we can add sort of a tween to our timeline and we're gonna do a from animation where we animate the words inside of this text element we're currently looping through. So what we'll do is use this, which references the text element. We'll find everything inside of it that has the class of word. And then we wanna animate those words from sort of an opacity of zero. We'll maybe animate them from a Y percent of a hundred. So they're completely down and out of view. And we'll give them each a duration of 0.5 for now. For the easing, we'll use greensock.com slash ease visualizer. I'm gonna use a back ease so it has a little bit of a bounce and we're gonna switch it to a back two to make it a little bit more extreme. Now I can just copy that ease value and paste it in here. We also need to offset the start of each word so they don't all animate at the same time. We can use an each stagger, which will put a 0.5 second delay between the start of each word, or we can use a mount, which says let all the words start within 0.5 seconds and just distribute the start times. So headings with less words will have more space in between each word. This is good for keeping the duration the same if we have headings with significantly different amount of words inside each one. So now we just need to link our timeline or our animation to play whenever our text box scrolls into view. So we'll basically use scroll trigger for that. We'll do scroll trigger.create to create a new trigger. We'll make our trigger element be the text box that we're currently looping through. So the word slide up attribute. And whenever the, let's say the top of that element reaches the bottom of the screen, that's what we'll consider an enter. So whenever that element enters view, we are going to grab our timeline and we could either play it, which means it'll only play once, the very first time it scrolls into view, or we could use dot restart, and it'll play every time it enters from the bottom. 
So if we were to refresh this here, you'll notice when top of that element reaches bottom of the screen, our animation plays. Now we do miss a lot of it because it's so far down, unless we were scrolling really fast. Um, so something we could try is maybe when the center of that text element reaches the bottom of the screen. So here it's kind of like halfway in view before it triggers. That's a little bit better, um, but we're still missing some of it. So maybe we say whenever the bottom of that element reaches bottom of screen. And if we were to try that here, it waits to animate till that text box is fully in view. And that looks great on desktop, but on mobile, if our text wraps and maybe it's taller than a viewport height, we'll be seeing it invisible for too long before we ever really get to read it. Um, so maybe a different solution we could try is when the top of the text element reaches 60% from the top of the screen. And I'll add markers true here so we can preview what that looks like. So here we'll see with our markers, this is 60% from the top of the screen. Whenever the top of our text element reaches that 60% mark, the animation plays. Now, whenever we scroll back down, the animation doesn't reverse or anything. So we're still seeing it in view and it kind of just re-triggers whenever it enters here, which looks a little weird. The first time was nice because the heading was hidden and then it entered, but we need a way to reverse it when it goes out of view. So we could add another callback here for on leave back. That's whenever the element exits from the bottom and we could basically reverse our timeline to make it play backwards. And if we do that, we can use play here instead of restart since play will just pick up where the reverse left off. So if we were to save that and refresh now, you'll notice the elements hidden on page load, it enters and reveals, and whenever we exit, it reverses the animation. And then we can play it again from there and it's just gonna keep going back and forth. Now we might not wanna see this heading actually animate out here. We might want it to wait till the heading's completely out of view from the bottom. So to have two separate trigger points, we're actually gonna need two separate scroll triggers. So this one here will handle the exit out. So we'll say the exit will be when the top of that element is at the bottom of the screen. That's when we'll play our exit uh, reverse. And then this one's for the enter when the top of that element is 60% from the top of the screen. That's when we want to run our sort of enter animation here. So if we save that and then we refresh here, You'll notice the heading doesn't animate till it reaches 60% from the top of the screen. Then it's gonna stay in view from that point on until the top of this heading reaches the bottom of the screen. So right there is when it's starting to reverse. And then it's not gonna play till again, the top of that heading is 60% from top of screen. So we have it basically hidden up here and it doesn't trigger till it reaches there. Now you are seeing, we kind of see it reverse if we scroll down and scroll back up. So to fix that, instead of animating it to its reverse state, we're gonna instantly set it back to a progress of zero. So back to the beginning and to the paused state. So it's just instantly gonna switch back to the beginning when it goes out of view, and then we'll have it play whenever it enters. And that should fix our little glitch of seeing the timeline reverse here. We do have a slight problem on page load that our text is fully visible before our animation starts and the JavaScript kicks in. So we're seeing that full text box, then the JavaScript runs and creates our animation. So we want this heading to be hidden by default and then we can use some JavaScript to set it to be visible. So we could of course just turn the opacity down, but then um, we wouldn't be able to easily edit the text or content. So we're gonna use CSS for this instead. So basically we'll grab every element with our text split uh, attribute. And we'll just turn the opacity of those text boxes down so we're not seeing them at all. Then after our animations and timelines are created, we'll go ahead and set the text splits elements to full opacity because we know the initial states on the words with their zero opacity and everything is applied. So using that method, we don't see any flash on page load, but if we head over to the Webflow editor, we'll notice that all our text, once the editor kicks in, is completely invisible, which makes it really hard for us to edit. Inside the Webflow editor, custom CSS runs, but JavaScript does not. So the opacity zero on our text elements is set, but the JavaScript to set it to full opacity is not. So to fix that, we'll just add a little more custom CSS. We'll say whenever the HTML element has a combo class of W editor on it, which is what Webflow editor applies, then we'll find all the text split elements inside of it and turn those to full opacity only when they're inside the Webflow editor. The last CSS we'll add in here is for the word classes. 
We'll set them to overflow hidden so when we animate the letters inside, the letters are sort of clipped off and masked. We'll also add some bottom padding so that the descenders on the words don't get cut. You may need to adjust this or remove it depending on the font that you upload. And I'm adding negative bottom margin to match that padding to get everything lined up again. I'm also adding transform origin to the bottom. So if I decide to rotate the words or animate them, they sort of animate from that bottom point. Now, what if we want to set up a second animation here, this time targeting everything with our letter slide down attribute? Well, we would need to copy our loop where we're looping through every element and creating sort of a timeline for them. And this time we're going to loop through anything that has the letter slide down attribute applied and create a timeline for those things. So here we're going to animate the characters inside of this element instead of the words. Uh, we don't need opacity since the characters are set to overflow hidden. We're going to animate them starting pulled up high by negative 120% and they'll slide down to their default resting point. Uh, the duration will be really fast for each letter, 0 0.3. The E's will do something simple since it's so fast, like a power one out. And for the stagger, we'll increase the amount of time we have to distribute the start times of each one of them. So that's sort of our animation here, and it's going to play whenever this element enters. Uh, so same scroll trigger settings we had from the previous. So if we refresh, this one is going to autoplay since it's already past the scroll start position. It's at the top of the screen. Um, when we go down to the letter slide down animation, so this one here, that animation is playing beautifully and it's just working. It's disappearing when we go to the bottom, re-entering here. Now we do have a lot of duplicate code. So all these scroll triggers we created are the exact same settings from here. And it would be nice to reuse it for every animation we create. So we'll create a function we can run anytime we want to create a scroll trigger. So we'll call it create scroll trigger. And inside this function, we're going to need to pass in some elements. So first we'll need to know what do we want to be the trigger element of the scroll trigger. And we'll also need to know what timeline do we want it to trigger. So we can run this code here. And what we'll do is take our scroll triggers um, basically out of this loop and put it inside of this function. Instead of triggering the keyword this, it will reference the trigger element, whatever we decide to pass into the function. So we'll do that also here. And instead of playing just some random timeline, we want it to reference whichever timeline we decide to pass in to this function. So we'll just throw that in there. And now we can use this function dynamically anytime we want to create sort of a scroll trigger. So in this case, the trigger element is going to reference whichever element we're currently looping through. And the timeline is going to reference this one we created in a variable up here. So whenever this element comes into view, play this timeline. And we can reuse that here. And we get to clean up all of this code, make it nice and simple. And now anytime we need to create a new animation, we just copy this block, change out the attribute name, and change out the animation itself. So that wraps up how to create these animations inside of Webflow and using GSAP. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you in the next one.